Hello everyone, my name is Romana and I am a PhD student in Marike Kajers group. Today I will be telling you about integrating gene regulatory networks and multiomics data using joint dimensionality reduction. As a little bit of a background, we know that heterogeneity in cancer is driven by the interplay of various molecular layers which we can capture through uh, omics technologies and as such, we are interested in looking at these omics together and analyze them in an integrative way. We also know that abnormalities in gene regulation are key drivers of cancers, and one way to represent these is through gene regulatory networks. Finally, joint dimensionality reduction methods have been increasingly more uh, popular in, in performing these sorts of multiomics integration analyses. And just a brief overview of how these omics of these JDR methods work. They take as input a set of omic matrices and they decompose them into a uh, set of latent factors as well as some weights that show how the different features contribute to these factors. In this study, we used 10 cohorts from TCGA and for all sample patients. Uh, we had gene expression, microRNA expression, and methylation data, and we also generated sample-specific gene regulatory networks. And because these networks are very large, we used some summary metrics, which we then inputted as a type of omic into these JDR models. One of the limitations of the JDR methods is uh, large differences in omic dimensionality. So if, for example, we would have a data set that has 20,000 features and one that has 400,000 features, uh, we, that, that would heavily bias the model. So we would need to perform some sort of feature selection. However, this is not always trivial to do. Another limitation can be outliers within the omics, which again, might not be trivial, trivial to deal with. One approach that can uh, mitigate both these issues is to perform a PCA on the data prior to JDR. And we wanted to test whether this PCR approach would yield comparable results to just using the raw data, and we used an existing benchmark to do this. And we looked at patient survival as a kind of way of assessing uh, the performance and in these plots each dot represents a latent factor and the the FDR is for association of these factors with patient survival. Green dots represent factors from models wh where we perform PCA and pink from models without the PCA and we found that there wasn't uh, any significant loss in performance. We were still able to capture the same information and in some cases we actually were able to amplify this signal when performing PCA. So we decided to continue with the PCA approach and we chose MOFA as the tool to move forward. We were interested to see whether adding gene regulatory networks would provide any new information or, or be beneficial in that sense to these uh, JDR models. So we compared a MOFA model with the networks, with MOFA models without the networks in the 10 cancers and we found that in 7 out of 10 there was actually an improvement in the association of these latent factors with survival when using the networks and in the case of colon cancer and ovarian cancer we were actually only able to identify these survival associated factors when we included the networks and not when we only used the other omics. We also looked at the uh, proportion of variance that was explained by each by by the model for each omic and we found that in colon cancer more than half of the variability in the networks was actually captured by the model so the networks are informing the model quite a lot we wanted to take a closer look at colon cancer and we also wanted to to use another data set to validate our findings. So we found a data set from Grant that had gene expression and also the, the sample specific networks. And we, we reproduced the analysis. And we wanted to see first, what, what are the driver of these survival associated factors? And we can see that both in the case of the TCGA and the Grant data sets, the in degrees are what were predominantly driving these survival associated factors. 
when we try to split our patients into survival groups based on these factors, we found that the survival curves for the two groups were significantly different in both, in both data sets. And we wanted to also see what exactly makes these groups different, so we performed a differential analysis, um, d differential regulatory analysis, and we identified several pathways that were differentially regulated in both datasets. These pathways included uh, MIC and, and uh, KRAS, as well as E2F, uh, epithelial to mesenchymal transition, and the G2M checkpoint. So to conclude, gene regulatory networks can be predictive of patient survival in cancers, and we found that in colon cancer, uh, the MIC, uh, E2F, EMT, KRAS, and G2M checkpoint pathways are differentially regulated between good and poor survivals. So with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. I would like to also thank my group and all the funding bodies that supported this work.